Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the interpretations um, that the court has when it comes to custody, family law and custody. Um, specifically, I want to discuss when the people involved in a family court case decide that one of the parents should have less visitation time and then they present their evidence um, supporting that or you know what they claim is supporting evidence. I think that you also have to look past what their actual determination is and see what additional factors are determined in the course of that to determine whether or not their findings are potentially not valid and whether or not those findings are bias, um, whether or not they're consistent in um, the way that they're trying to enforce them. So the reason I bring that up is for an example, um, a very common issue brought up in family court is that one of the parents is disordered. Um, and it's typically a mental health related disorder that is claimed by the opposing parent. And in that situation, what they're hoping to do is to paint that parent in a negative light that will encourage the members of the courts to determine that it's not in the best interest um, of the children to be around that parent. Um, now, these mental issues um, could be any number of things, and it's not, it's certainly not limited to mental health issues. Um, it could be a physical disability. There have been numerous cases where the courts have discriminatorily ruled against a parent with a disability, whether that parent was missing a limb, um, maybe had um, compromised eyesight, you know, maybe that parent was blind or deaf. Uh, there are numerous instances where the courts will determine that it's in the best interest of the children or child to be with a parent that doesn't have that documented disability. Another interesting thing to consider is when it comes to disabilities, especially something that's like mental health related, for instance, those disabilities cannot be quantified through genetic testing. So these are subject to someone's opinion. And what you run into with situations like that is because they are limited to someone's opinion, you really have to dig deep into whether or not the person who's levying that opinion, or in this case, it would be an allegation, has the qualifications to make a claim like that. Because unless they are a medical expert in that field, it really goes way beyond the bounds of their capacity to levy that sort of allegation. Another thing to consider is any time a parent faces an allegation of a mental health issue that is being used as leverage to deny them time with their children, something that they want to immediately consider is that that allegation alone, it does not have to be proved. The minute that an allegation is levied against that parent, they are covered under the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, protections afforded to those with actual or alleged disabilities. And if you don't believe me, look it up. It's out there. And what that parent is going to have to determine is whether or not maybe they agree with that assessment of themselves. And if so, they should request accommodations. And those, requ those accommodations should be honored. If they request those and there's obstruction of that, then that also needs to be documented. Um, there are a lot of ways that family courts can fail the family. Um, <clears throat> one thing to consider too is in situations like this, if it is suggested that one parent, you know, shouldn't have as much time, the next thing that that parent who's being denied time may want to inquire is if that perception is that the parent is a problem, is supervised visitation required? If it's not being required, why isn't it being required? Because if it's not being required, then that begs the question, are those allegations legitimate? 